Hello, my name is Dave and you're watching PlayStation Access. Now, I've probably poured more hours into Warzone this year than any other game, and whilst I'm loving every minute, I can't help but feel I could be doing better. That's why I sought out the help of Call of Duty YouTuber and streamer Sprat to get the lowdown on everything from must modify controls, where to land, and how to tackle the final circle. We had a chat on camera and a couple of duos games together, and now I've compiled what I'm modestly calling the Ultimate Expert Tips Guide to Call of Duty Warzone. Ever. The expert being Sprat, in, in case that wasn't clear. But why is Sprat the man for the job? Well, he did win the first ever game of Warzone for a start. First people to ever play it, all these influencers, first dub. I think we'll take that. We'll take that trophy, we'll take that crown. And there's the small matter of his KD. KD is 4.05. And Sprat, remind me, what's your record number of kills in a single game of Battle Royale? My current best one is 28 kills. And that was the second place, so I know your pain of getting the second place when you should you should have got the first, so... I can't imagine <laughs> yeah. getting 28 kills and coming second, that's insane. You're right past me, that is insane. So, yeah, I think I've come to the right place. So, let's start at the beginning. Before you even think about dropping into the map, there are a ton of things you should be doing in the menus to give yourself the best shot. Starting with number one, disable film grain, world motion blur and weapon motion blur. Although they may improve the game aesthetically, these graphical features make enemies less distinguishable from the world, especially when moving and looking around. Those settings, if you turn those down or turn them all the way off, it makes things a little bit more crisp, a little bit, uh, a little bit clearer. Number two, set your minimap shape to square. This is just a simple case of visual real estate. You can fit more information in a square than in a circle, so if you're still rocking the default circular shape, you're not seeing as much of the map around you. Number three, don't assume the default control scheme that comes with Warzone is right for you. As Sprat says, The best tip I can give is to keep your thumb on the analog stick at all times so you're always like focused on aiming. One control scheme that should help with this is Tactical, which moves Crouch from its default binding on Circle to R3, which means you never need to move your thumb when crouching, going prone, standing or sliding. Um, I can just drop to the floor or crouch or get behind cover without jeopardizing like my awareness and my aim. Many top players like Sprat also swap or flip L2 and R2 to L1 and R1. That was something I picked up back on Black Ops 3. I think it was more of like an instant response time. I'm not sure if that's the same now with the controllers, but uh, just being used to it since then, it allows you to have like a pretty good trigger finger. If you want to get really serious about control schemes, you might want to invest in a controller with undergrip buttons or hunt down a back button attachment for your DualShock 4. It allows you to use like the unused fingers at the back that just sit there, it allows you to like press certain buttons that keep your thumb on the analog stick at all times. You can map these additional buttons however you want. It might take a bit of getting used to, but once you've nailed it, the gameplay benefits are huge. Speaking of huge benefits, perhaps the most significant option to change in your control scheme is to enable contextual tap as your use reload behavior. Say you usually hold square to pick up loot. Well, instead of holding that, you actually just press it. When there's loot on the floor, a gun or, you know, uh, armor plate, whatever it may be, you just have to tap it once. So you're not sat holding, you know, square on this item, on that item, and you're a lot more quicker when you're looting. So you can get away and, you know, start progressing forward. Best of all, it's contextual. So a tap of square will still reload your weapon if you're not looking at loot on the ground. And holding square will always reload your weapon. Bonus tip, did you know that double tapping square or whichever button you have mapped to use will trigger any C4 you've thrown out? Because I did not know that and it's caused me no end of suffering. The last big decision you need to make about your control setup is your stick sensitivity. There is no one right answer to this, but as Sprat puts it in tip number six. For me, it's starting, uh, starting low and, and working your way up. Uh, I think the highest the higher the sensitivity you control is the best approach. The highest sensitivity you can still control, that's the key here. Too high is just as bad as too low, so work your way up incrementally, starting somewhere you feel comfortable. Warzone also offers an ADS multiplier for low and high zoom states. Be sure to tinker with these as the sensitivity you want in general gameplay is unlikely to match the sensitivity you need whilst ADS. Remember though, this is a multiplier, so a value of 1 is neutral. Anything higher will increase sensitivity, whilst anything lower will decrease sensitivity. As a sniper, Sprat has an aggressively fast high zoom sensitivity. At the end of the day, you don't want to be in your scope for a long time, especially with sniping, because of that glare, that glint that you get. Um, I'm sure you've seen it when you're running around in war zone. there's a lot of glints in the hills or in the mountains, all these snipers staring down at you. Um, so the reason I have a higher one there is that when I'm in my scope, I can do those 
minor adjust and I can do those adjustments a lot quicker than I normally would. If you're serious about maxing your chances of winning Battle Royale, this is tip number seven now, make sure you've explored the audio menu. Aside from choosing an overall audio mix that works for you, you can actually test the different audio mixes in the More Info menu, by the way, be smart about adjusting individual volume types. Do you really need to hear the in-game music? Turn it down or even off to make sure you're only hearing what you need. Wear headphones when you play and make sure you wear them the right way around, otherwise you'll be turning left when you should be turning right. Yes, that one is from personal experience. Okay, we're on to tip number eight now, but we're still not dropping in because we need to talk about loadouts. First of all, what is a loadout? It's basically a crate where you and your teammates can get a custom class with your favorite weapons, with your favorite attachments and certain perks. This is so important because it's the only way you can guarantee you can play the way you want to, with guns and equipment that you understand and have set up to handle in a way that suits you. Furthermore, loadouts are the only way to get perks in game, and perks can offer a huge game winning edge. Especially certain things that kind of cater to your playstyle. Ghost is such a common perk that people rock, and that will keep you hidden from the radar. Cold blooded, a lot of people like that, keeps you hidden from the thermal. So even if you haven't ranked up specific weapons and got the right attachments yet, because you're, like I said, new to the game or on the free to, uh, free to play player, you might not have the chance to unlock these as quickly as you'd like. Amp to let you swap weapons faster if you're an aggressive player. So there's certain perks in the game that are going to help you uh, benefit as a player. You don't need the weapons, but you know if you just got the perks, that'll be yeah, it's just as helpful, definitely. And that's why Plan A1 every time you drop in should be to get your loadout as soon as possible to enable you to play at your best. I'd always recommend getting a loadout as quickly as you can because at that at that point you're then at an advantage. So any teammate or any opponent you run into, you should. Have the, up, have, uh, have the upper hand because you have your weapon, your loadouts. But what do you put in your loadout? Well, it's mostly down to personal taste, but there is a technique that top players use to maximize their advantage, and that is to prep at least two loadouts, both of which they will recover during a game. The first loadout drop is all about getting the weapons you want, and so includes the perk Overkill, which lets you carry two primaries. The secondary loadout is all about getting the ghost perk, which makes you invisible to UAVs and heartbeat sensors, which is crucial in the late game. Recovering a second loadout means you will drop everything that came with the first, but you'll no longer need the overkill perk as you can pick up your discarded weapons from the ground. Best of both worlds, your two favorite weapons and ghost. So you get that first loadout that you paid for, grab overkill, and then when the, set, when the first one drops around the end, I think it's the end of the first zone, allows you to grab Ghost, that way you can have two of your overkill weapons and Ghost and you can run around the map with confidence, knowing you're hidden from radars and heartbeat sensors and all that and still be in the best position for close gauge, close engagements and uh, those far ones too. Equipment is another big consideration when choosing your loadout and whilst a lot of people pack a heartbeat sensor, it's worth considering how useful that will be in the late stages when most end game players will have Ghost which counters it. Also, if you're playing with a team, it's always best to coordinate loadouts. I don't usually run the heartbeat sensor, I just, it doesn't really suit my playstyle, but I usually run with someone who does use a heartbeat. So if you're teaming up with different people in duos, in trios, in quads, it is always nice to have at least one with a heartbeat sensor so it gives you that you know idea and that knowledge of if there's a guy in that room if you didn't have a UA, uh, UAV available. Um, so if you want to rock heartbeat, I'll rock stun grenades. That way you can heartbeat the buildings and I can stun in and uh, yeah, take them down. That's why tip number nine is to pack a heartbeat sensor in your primary overkill loadout, but swap it out for something like a stun grenade in your secondary ghost loadout and make sure you coordinate. And a quick side tip about the heartbeat sensor, it works regardless of whether you use it for the duration of the animation. Capitalize on this by holding it up briefly and then listen for any resulting beeps. The idea is to be constantly ready for action and getting caught holding a heartbeat sensor is a surefire way for things to go south quick. If you're not exactly sure what to put in your loadout, try stuff out in Plunder. If I'm trying to figure out a class setup or you know different attachments, stuff like that, the best way for me to just kind of practice with those things is just to go in Plunder. You don't have to worry about dying, you don't have to worry about like the pressure of staying alive, you can just try different things out, you get the battle royale feel. You earn XP and weapon XP in Plunder too, so it's a great way to level up, unlock weapon mods and attachments, and learn the map. And tip number 10, you can't underestimate how much weapon mods and attachments can change the attributes of the base weapon. The one I can kind of describe the most is the AX50, because that is like a really slow 
just painfully slow sniper rifle that a lot of people don't like to run around and quick scope with and it's just like that base gun people think god that that gun is terrible you know absolutely terrible but once you start ranking it up you have different attachments you get the tac laser you get a certain stock a certain grip tape like a lot of the attachments that come with those guns just increase that aimed out sight speed increase the damage at range increase your mobility so it's definitely something that you need to focus on when you play in the game like you said the free to play players out there the people that don't play as much will struggle to get those but there's certain playlists certain things out there double weapon xp stuff like that allows you to get those attachments so you're actually in a level playing field because you don't want to be coming up against someone with a, with a maxed out gun with all those attachments if you're using the basics you know i like to get the core gun the core blueprint from the store or from the uh, armory or from the I always forget what I call it, the uh, the battle pass. You know, get these cool looking guns and then customize the attachments based on my playstyle. So a maxed out weapon is what you need, but how do you get that precious weapon XP? Obviously there's double XP events and in-game challenges to complete, but did you realize you were earning weapon XP every time you completed a contract? So tip number 11, make sure you equip a weapon you're looking to level up every time you're about to complete a contract. Finally on XP, this is tip number 12, don't underestimate the power of the lobby. It's actually good to rank up your weapons, you actually get uh, attachments and, and cameras unlocked within this portion of the game. So it's kind of like you're playing a little bit of a multiplayer game, so you definitely can you know, make the most of it. And if anything, you're warming up your shot for the, uh, for the game. Okay, we're finally dropping in for tip number 13 now, and that's appropriate because it's all about where to land. There's no single right answer to this, but since we know our primary objective is to get a loadout ASAP, we also know we need to be getting some quick cash. So there's a couple of ways to do it. You can land on certain hotspots where the money is. Um, those banks, there's a lot of bank buildings around the map, uh, which always, majority of the time, have a lot of cash, a lot of stacks. Uh, it's all about just getting that quick loot. Um, if you don't want to go to the certain hotspots, landing on a scavenger off the rip is always fantastic. We love a good scavenger. A lot of people kind of underestimate them uh, because you think, oh, I've got to go for these chests and walk to there and walk to there. But there's so much money coming out of those, especially if you're in quads. The first one, I think, is like 2000 each. So that's $8,000 straight away. And it's usually pretty quick. So we love a good scavenger. Love to find certain hotspots in the map where there's a lot of money. Uh, and that's something you'll find out when you play the game. You know, you land in certain different areas. That's the best way to get money. The quicker you can get boots on the ground, the quicker you'll be earning. So dropping in must always be a balance between where you can find cash, how confident you're feeling that you can earn some early kills, and how long it will take you to get there from the plane. The other thing that goes through Sprat's mind when he's dropping in is the position of the circle. His plan is not to get inside the safe zone as soon as possible, but rather, tip number 14, use it as bait. We call it gatekeeping. Once that first circle comes in and we start moving, we kind of get into the safe zone and then we start, you know, picking people off who are coming into the safe zone. So we know, everybody knows where the circle is, but if we get there first, we get ahead of them, that's where we're going to be able to get a lot of kills and maximize like head glitches, different mountains, different, you know, hillsides, whatever it may be, because they've got to run to you. They're in the open ground, the open, you know, road, whatever it may be, uh, and allows you to get free kills and just get yourself in a comfortable position to uh, to progress further into the into the zone. Got it. So you're literally crossing into that circle, turning 180 degrees and shooting anybody who's trying to do the same thing. Exactly, yeah. You can't outrun the first circle. I don't know if you knew that, but you can't be quicker than it. So it doesn't right. matter if you uh, have a gas mask or whatever, you can't run faster than it. So you can't get caught there. So the best advice I've got is as soon as you know where that first circle is, just stop working through the map, killing people here, left, right, and center, and then just get to the edge of the zone and hold it. If you're looking to get into that circle quickly, or anywhere for that matter, you might want to drive. And tip 15 is all about how to stop yourself from becoming a massive target for RPGs and other explosives. The best approach to have is find trophy systems on the floor. Uh, a lot of people underestimate how good a trophy system is. A lot of people put them in buildings, but if you put one on a vehicle, I think it can take like five or six uh, you know rockets or c4s or wow. stuns or whatever it may be so it's if you're driving past a team and they th all throw a stun you're still going to be able to keep going starting fights you're unlikely to win is one of the quickest routes to the bottom of the leaderboard and tip number 16 is essentially learn when to engage the enemy and when to back off but how do you make that decision and what should you be looking for it's all about you know positioning at the end of the day you don't have to have the best shot in the world you just have to be in a better position than those guys you have more cover you kind of wait for your right time to fight uh, and that's something you'll pick up by playing the game you'll realize certain 
points have advantages, certain points are disadvantages, certain buildings are better, certain walls are better, whatever it may be. Uh, so that's something you'll pick up over time. But definitely don't have to fight every single team. There's a lot of teams that I still see. There might be four close together and you think, no way. We're not, we're not getting those guys. They are, you know, aggressive. They look like they're good. Just avoid them until you're in a better position where you can fight. We've already covered the importance of cash, but once you've bought your loadout, what should you be spending it on? So load up first, then you need armor so you can be confident in your gunfights. And then UAVs. I think a lot of people don't buy UAVs. They get self-res straight away, self-revive. They just think, oh, what if I die? You know, I want to revive myself. I usually don't buy that until I've had my Gulag uh, because I think it's a lot of money, 4,500 to self-revive. A lot of times you, you're going to get killed anyway. They're going to down you and probably finish you straight away. So I think that is a, a bit of money that you should save. Prioritize UAV, prioritize getting more money. It's all about like investing. Get a UAV, maybe pick up a contract, like a kill bounty or something, to then pop that UAV, maximize the money you're going to make from that, and then move forward. Uh, but yeah, then once you've had your Gulag or it's later in the game, self-revive is priority. But it's just cycling those UAVs, it's cycling those kill streaks to allow you to stay alive and make the most of every gunfight. That was tip number 17, by the way, and I heard mention of the Gulag there, which is as good a segue as we're going to get into tip number 18. There are lots of things you probably already know about the Gulag. Sometimes your teammate will spawn in the Gulag with you and they can call out enemy movements. Sometimes you can tell where your opponent is based on where spectators are throwing their rocks from above. You can spray paint the enemy whilst you're in the gallery, which might make them stand out a little better when the one-on-one -on -one begins. My own personal tip is that there are several different Gulag maps, each with their own quirks, so be sure to scope out the lay of the land from the gallery ahead of getting into the pit. The one that I think a lot of people underestimate is using what you've got given to you. Like, you've got equipment in there. There's some weird ones like decoys, which might distract the enemy, but like the stun grenades, there's frag grenades. A lot of people don't expect a grenade to the to the forehead, you know? So yeah. <laughs> I think using those things, if you're not confident in the one-on-one -on -one gunfight, just make sure you use like the, the equipment that's there for you. But apart from that, just don't miss. I think it's as <laughs> sadly as simple as that. Just don't miss your shots and you should be, should be good. If your teammate doesn't make it out of the gulag, send them this tips video, obviously, but then start thinking about how to get them back. You could earn more cash and buy their drop, but that could take time and leaves you dangerously undermanned and vulnerable to attack. Plus, the cash could be better spent. That's why tip 19 is to use either a supply run or most wanted contract to win back your team. Supply runs have you get to a particular buy station within a time limit. Once you get there, you'll find every item for sale at a massive discount or you can buy back one teammate for free. Most wanted contracts make you a target by marking you on the map for a specific amount of time. Survive the contract and any teammate spectating will automatically drop back in for free. Given the nature of these contracts, if at all possible, try to pick one up that's near a vehicle you can use. If you've got a trophy system, even better. Now that we've got you and your teammates all the way to the final circle, you're probably hoping there's a top tip to secure the win. Well, no, of course there isn't, but there are plenty of things you can be doing to give your team the best shot. I think it's all about the playing the circle at the end of the day, playing the high ground, playing the positioning. Um, sometimes, like you said, it's situational, so you might be in a bad spot, you might have got there late, the team is already in a power position, basically, and you're... A little bit stuck, but the lucky thing at the moment is the gas, the final circle moves. There's certain situations where you might have the high ground, but necessarily that might not be the best play because you have to come from the high ground to push down to the circle. So it's just understanding, like, if you see the circle, figure out, okay, there's a building there, there's trees there. You've got to figure out where the best spot is and then push towards that with a team or play yourself, you know? You can't always just think, we're in the gas, we're in the circle, we're safe, because at the end of the day, that's not how it is. And ultimately, that's tip number 20, play smart. The best players tend to be the best, not just because of their accuracy or quick reactions, but because they've learned to think, to play the odds, to be patient, and to play smart, not emotionally. It's no easy thing, but if you can nail that, you'll be nailing the wins on left, right, and center. And that's our ultimate expert super tips for being the best Warzone player you can possibly be ever. Thank you to Sprat for being incredibly patient and incredibly knowledgeable. Make sure you go and check out his channel. You won't regret it. Hit us with your Warzone tips in the comments below and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with everything from the world of PlayStation. PlayStation.